Your personal brand is more important than ever. Regardless of what you majored in or what your career will be, each one of you will always be the architect and brand manager for at least one brand, you. And it's just about the most important job that you will ever have. Now, I hope the University of Maryland will forgive me, but the days of worrying about your undergraduate GPA are over. Now, you need to focus on your GPS, the internal compass that helps you navigate your career and the world. A lot of changes will happen in your life after this milestone day, but the most dramatic and the most important change may be the fire hose of decisions that you will have to make, large and small, every day. And that's where your personal brand management will help you so much. You may not want to run a big company. You may not want to live in California. You may not want to have a family. But having your own vision of your life 20 years from now is like the brand blueprint every successful consumer brand has and uses to navigate and make decisions. Here's another suggestion. Write a personal brand manifesto that reflects your dreams, your values, your strengths, and your boundaries. The form and style of what you write aren't important. Just make sure you look at it regularly. Evolve it as things change and as you gain experience, just like great brands do. And if you consistently live up to your own brand and market it wisely, you'll attract the enthusiasts and the mentors who will be invaluable to your career. Most importantly, you will build a great reputation. And a reputation is the most important, valuable product of any brand. Long after you leave a job, as a favorite boss once told me, people will remember you more for your character than your accomplishments. I take it for granted that anyone receiving a degree from Smith is talented. Think of all the talent in this room alone. And then there's also all the other sharp people graduating from other great schools. So how do you start in a job interview? My advice, think in terms of GPS not GPA. If it's worth a job having, there'll be lots of qualified candidates to choose from. Now just imagine the busy person on the other side of the desk interviewing you is a time-starved consumer with too many options. They'll be trying to figure out what do you stand for? How will their organization benefit from your strengths? It comes down to a purchase decision. If your brand is authentic, compelling, and valuable, and you stand out, people will want to invest in you, and you'll be more likely to get that offer. Just remember that every successful brand, whether it's Apple, or Audi, or Kelly, or myself, they all begin with a big dream, with vision about their future state, which everything else follows. Now, that would be the perfect commencement cliche, follow your dreams. So I hope that you're not going to be disappointed if I get down to some brass tactics instead. Because a great education, which you all have, big dreams, which you possibly have, a powerful personal, personal brand are very important, but they will only get you so far. So to wrap it up, here's some advice, which is less lofty and certainly less poetic than what you've heard from me and what you'll hear from others today but it is every bit as valuable. So here we go. First, and my kids are in the room also, so you gotta imagine that this is for them also. <laughs> know that when looking people in the eye, a firm handshake and a sincere smile, and speaking clearly, all count. No joke. We live in a world where there is less and less time to make a good impression. Use your tools wisely to market your brand. Second, check your spelling. Yes, check your spelling. Come on, people. I didn't have spell check. There's pretty much no excuse for spelling and grammatical errors today when you could just at a keystroke make sure you check it because you're going to be sending those emails to people like me who actually care. Third, write thank you notes. Yes. I actually mean write them 
on a card, not email and not text. The experience of opening a, and reading a thoughtfully handwritten note is more powerful today than ever in a digital world. If it is the only thing that you remember from my speech today, you will send me a thank you note. <laughs> Fourth, respect experience. You're about to leave a world of peers for one with a lot of people who are going to seem old, and in some cases, admittingly, clueless. But just remember, just because we're not chatting with you on Slack doesn't mean that we can't teach you anything. Learn from the experience of others, their successes and their mistakes. And remember that it won't be long before you two are the, sitting in front of the class of 2025 and seem ancient. Fifth, think before you post. <laughs> the parents are loving this. <laughs> Look, if I do sound like your mom or dad, good. I cannot tell you how many talented people that I've seen screw up a lifetime opportunity for a moment of bad judgment that have immortalized them on some server. Personally, I love social media. I've used it to transform brands. It is absolutely a powerful ingredient of today's world and should be leveraged to maximum. But be careful. If you think employers aren't looking at your Instagram, think again. And finally, fail forward. Yes, I'm actually concluding your commencement address by encouraging you and talking to you about failure. But let's face it, failures are inevitable. Things are going to go wrong, and the curveballs of life will just keep coming. So get used to it, learn from it, and put your energy, your emotional energy, into recovering fast and rebounding from it with confidence. In my family, we have a saying. It's all about the recovery. We haven't trademarked it. As a brand guy, you could use it. Feel free to repeat and share it. But being able to muster the drive and determination out of failure has helped me through some of the toughest moments in my life and inspired triumphs. So when you fail, and you will, fail forward.